Hello everyone, welcome to Aspiring Student YouTube channel. So today I am going to start a new series for quant word problems for SBI, IBPS, RRBs, PVOs and clerks in the same way RRB assistant mains, LIC, EPFO, ESIC and all other competitive exams. Okay, where you can find quantitative aptitude as one of the subject my dear friends. Okay. So this is a very very important such series for all the aspirants who are preparing for various competitive exams. Okay. In this series, I would like to discuss with you only more or less only shortcuts. Okay. Only shortcuts. Okay friends. So you know how important the time in the competitive exams. So that's why we need to solve each and every question within 30 seconds. Okay. We need to solve each and every question within 30 seconds my dear friends. So that's why I am here with you to discuss some of the shortcuts in the quantitative aptitude my dear friends. Okay. So let us start our today's class. Before that I would like to tell you one important thing if you are new to my channel please subscribe and click on the bell icon to never ever miss any notification from my side my dear friends okay so now if it is possible for you please share the session with your friends and in different whatsapp groups and in telegram groups my dear friends okay so right now i am also sharing so just a second okay it's done from my side so hoping hoping that you also have done this so let us see some word problems in the quant word problems in english part one my dear friends okay so here is your first question this is your first question guys so answer this this question my dear friends okay and before that please confirm me that whether my voice is clear for you or not whether my voice is clear for you or not guys whether my voice is clear for you or not. Let me check from my side also. Question. Okay, it's clear. So this is the first question guys. This is the first question. So let me see how many of you people will answer this. So let me solve this. Rombot setting quantity of rice for 600 rupees. Okay, so Rombot setting quantity of rice for 600 rupees, my dear friends. Okay, if he sells one fifth of the rice at 30 percent loss, so if he sells one fifth of the rice, one fifth part of the rice at 30 percent loss, and the remaining should be sold at what percentage profit or loss? If he gets an overall profit of 10% my dear friends. Okay. If he gets an overall profit of 10%. So this question can be done in many ways. But the easiest method to solve this type of question is allegation method. Okay. Allegation method. Understood or not? So let's see how to solve this with allegation method my dear friends. Okay. Now see guys. The the drum has bought certain quantity of rice for 600 rupees and we are not we are not sure about the what is the amount what is the quantity that he has bought okay but we don't need to calculate the what is the amount he bought okay that means what amount of quantity he bought but we require to calculate the remaining part is sold at what percent profit or loss what percent profit or loss okay now see guys so at first one is one fifth of the part is sold at 30 percent loss okay 30 percent loss so if he sells at 30 percent loss then what what is the amount that he sells for 70 percent 70 percent okay now we don't know the re remaining part at what percent he sells so it is x percent it is x percent and overall he gains 10%. 10% means we will write 110%. We will write 110% my dear friends. Okay. And 
this part we have already get it in the question itself because see he sells one fifth of the part at 30 percent loss means he sell total five parts of the five parts total quantity is five parts and he sells one part at 30 percent loss okay one part at 30 percent of loss and the remaining four parts is sold at what percentage profit or loss we have to calculate that okay so at 30 percent loss means he sell it for 70 percent so for 70 percent how much quantity sell one part okay and the remaining part is four parts understood or not the total quantity is five parts okay the total quantity is five parts my dear friends he sells one fifth of the part and remaining part is five parts so this is how we write one is one and four now see guys get the difference 110 minus 70 what you get guys 40 so this part is 40 so four parts is 40 my dear friends four parts is 40 then one part is one part is 10 okay one part is 10 so here we have one part so this part so let 10 percent okay 10 parts so one part is 10 so see this is the mean value this is the mean value and in allegation this is very very important my dear friends so one value should be less than mean value and the other value should be more than the mean value okay one value should be less than the mean value and the other value should be more than the mean value now see here the mean value is 110 percent and here we have 70 percent which is less than 110 okay now we have to place in this x percent which is greater than this 110 why because one of the part is less than mean value and other part is more than the mean value so now see here 110 and the difference we get is 10 then what's the number should i place in place of x to get the difference of 10 my dear friends it is 120 it is 120 or not 120 percentage now tell me whether he get loss or profit whether he get loss or profit 120 percent means he gets 20 percent profit my dear friends he get 20 percent profit understood or not he get 20 percent profit so here the answer is option a 20 percent profit my dear friends 20 percent profit understood or not so let's move to the next question here is your next question guys so which is based on trains which is based on trains my dear friends okay so very very important question these type of questions we will see regularly in sba clerks or in ibps po prelims ibps clerk prelims rrbs especially okay so now answer this question guys Pinakini Express starts from Vijayawada to Chennai. Okay, so traveling at a speed of 75 km per hour. So this express travels at a speed of 75 km per hour. It is late by 30 minutes. It is late by 30 minutes. And traveling at a speed of 100 km per hour. Traveling at a speed of 100 km per hour. It is again late by 15 minutes again led by 15 minutes find the distance traveled by pinakini express find the distance traveled by pinakini express we are we all know that distance is equal to speed into time distance is equal to speed into time my dear friends so to solve this question also we have three or four methods to solve this question okay one is basic weather one is taking time okay but by using the speeds we can directly calculate the sorry by using the speed and time that is distance equal to speed into time with that formula we can directly get the distance within one step my dear friends okay let me tell you how this happens now see what's our formula guys distance is equal to speed into time distance is equal to speed into time so now d is equal to now d is equal to speed so now we have to write speed in this way s1 into s2 divided by speeds difference okay i will write speed difference as delta s okay delta s into now time time difference delta t difference in time delta t 
understood or not guys sorry understood or not so how i write this formula understood or not so distance equal to speed into time so the same equation i have written like this that is we have two speeds okay we have two speeds guys one time the train is traveling at 75 km per hour and the other time it is traveling at 100 km per hour so with this equation we will directly get the distance my dear friends now see s1 is what is the s1 this is 75 km so 75 into s2 is 30 sorry 100 km 100 divided by difference of these two 100 minus 75 that is 25 25 now time difference now time difference so how many of you people know that to calculate the difference in time guys so this is late by 30 minutes and it is again late by 15 minutes both in both the cases the train is reaching late okay but one time it is 30 minutes and one time it is 15 minutes so see guys just forget this one just forget this and just listen here very carefully so this is our actual time so this line is our actual time guys just assume it as 10 just assume it as 10 guys okay that is 10 am or 10 pm so by moving it 75 kilometers per hour by moving 75 kilometers per hour it is late by 30 minutes so it means it reaches it reaches at 10 30 okay in the same way if it is moving at 100 kilometers per hour in a second case if it is moving at 100 kilometers per hour it is again laid by 15 minutes and then it means it reaches at 10 15 guys okay 10 15 understood or not 10 15 guys so now see in both the cases the train is reaching lately now what's the difference in time guys now what's the difference in that difference in that time see guys whenever you get both the cases are same that is late then take the difference between these two timings 30 minutes minus 15 minutes that is 15 minutes it is late by 15 minutes guys so minutes convert into hours that is 60 divided by 60 guys divided by 60 now see 25 3 times 15 4 times 4 25 times okay now 25 into 3 25 into 3 that is 75 kilometers so the distance between chennai and vijayawada is that is traveled by pinakini express is 75 kilometers guys 75 kilometers understood or not understood or not guys understood or not so now let's move to the next question guys now let's move to the next question here is your next question which is very very interesting question guys okay it's based on a mixture and allegation question okay mixture and allegation type of question now see guys from 60 liters of pure milk from 60 liters of pure milk 12 liters is removed and pour water so from 60 liters of pure milk 12 liters is removed and pour water this process is repeated two more times this process is repeated two more times how much percent of milk in the container becomes 32 percent okay now the percentage of milk becomes 32 percent guys how much extra amount of milk should be added after the given operations so understood or not this question guys understood or not so initially we have 60 liters of pure milk guys initially we have 60 liters of pure milk from that 12 liters is removed okay 12 liters of pure milk is removed and added water and add water and this process is repeated two more times okay total it is done for three times okay total it is done for three times now some amount of milk comes at last to that milk we have added some extra amount of milk and now the percentage of milk in the container becomes 32 percentage now the question what they're asking is what is the amount of that extra milk we have added to the final quantity okay understood or not now see guys 
now see let me so let me show you how to solve this question very fastly now see guys 60 liters so initially we have 60 liters so it is an extension of allegation method my dear friends this question is an extension of allegation method we cannot do this type of question mixture and allegation type of some of the mixture and allegation type of questions we cannot do by allegation methods okay this is a, from mixtures it is extension of mixtures guys okay now see initially we have 60 liters from that we have taken 12 liters every time so 12 liters from 60 so 12 liters is removing from 60 liters okay 12 one times 12 five times so each time one by fifth part is removing guys so now the remaining quantity is four by fifth so from this remaining quantity is four by five and this process is repeated two more times this process is repeated two more times again four by five again four by five okay so just now i told you total we have done the operation for three times okay guys now where is this thing so now understand or not why have i write four by five so we have to calculate the final quantity of milk so that's why each time we are removing one part of this 60 liters guys okay every time we are removing same quantity and adding the same quantity of water okay every time we are removing same quantity and, and adding also same quantity so the final quant mixture remains constant that is 60 liters so from these 60 liters we are removing every time 12 liters that means one fifth of the quantity we are removing each time so the remaining quantity is four fifth and this is this operation is done three times okay so that's why four by five four by five four by five that is equal to what you get guys this is five 12 times five 12 times so now nothing is going to cancel here so now see guys five five is 25 and this is six sorry four cube that is 64 into 12 64 into 12 that is 640 and 64 two times 128 that is 768 768 768 guys okay so the final quantity that what we get is 768 divided by 25 guys okay now we can cancel out this that is c this is 25 three times that is 75 and one remains okay that is that big 18 okay put zero here now it becomes 180 180 means point 25 seven times 175 and five remains 25 two times is 50 that is 30.7572 we get guys 30.72 we get now what is the see the final quantity of milk that we get is 30.72 guys 30.72 final quantity we get here 30.72 liter that is 30.72 percent see in that in overall of 100 percent we have 30 percent so whenever you calculate this type of equation you will get final quantity the remaining quantity guys that is milk you get the final quantity of milk guys okay now see let me erase this calculation so now 30.72 so if you add some extra amount then it has to become 32 percent okay so now see guys 30.72 for this if we add 1.28 so this is 10 carry 1 and this is 10 carry 1 2 and 3 so this is 32 now if we add 1.28 liters of pure milk again if we add 1.28 liters of pure milk again then it becomes 32 percentage guys then it becomes 32 percentage understood or not initially we so overall the quantity is 100% and it now we have 30.72% only but we require 32% okay what we get is 30.72 if we add 1.28 liters more if we add 1.28 liters more milk then we will get 32% guys so the answer is option C okay now move to next question here is your next question guys which is based on 
boards and streams these type of questions we will see mostly in rrb po prelims guys rrb po prelims these type of questions are very frequently asked in rrb po prelims as well as in ibbs club prelims also as well as in ibbs club prelims also okay guys now see the ratio of speed of board and stream is 12 is to 3 12 is to 3 if the ratio of time taken by boat to travel d kilometers in upstream and d plus 90 kilometers downstream is 5 is to 6 then find the value of d then find the value of d guys now see hoping so that you know the basic concepts of boats and stream guys so we are here we have speed of boat as well as speed of stream and there in the ratio of 12 is to 3 now we can calculate the downstream speed as well as upstream speed because boat speed y is equal to 12x and stream y is equal to 3x so now downstream speed is ds downstream speed is 12 plus 3 15x upstream speed is 12 minus 3 9x okay 12 minus 3 9x now we know that distance is equal to speed into time okay and time is equal to distance upon speed guys we know this formula now by using this one we can calculate this question very fastly now see guys time is equal to so first of all you you take whether downstream or upstream so first here we have upstream so in upstream we travel d kilometers in upstream we have traveled d kilometers divided by upstream the speed is 9x okay and t2 t2 that is d plus 90 and downstream speed is 15x 15x now see guys they have also given us that time ratio between downstream and upstream now this is t1 and t2 instead of this t1 and t2 i can place this 5 is to 6 or not guys instead of this t1 and t2 i can place this 5 is to 6 guys now rs t1 and t2 and place 5 is to 6 okay so just to understand i write t1 and t2 so, but when you are solving in the exam you don't need to write, write these equations okay the direct step that you have to write is this one guys directly you have to write this step you no need to write these all things okay just to understand i have written like this now see guys this is down upstream upstream time is 5x 5x and downstream is 6x because they are in the ratio of 5 to 6 so that's why 5x and 6x now d is equal to 45x guys d is equal to 45x next here d plus 90 is equal to 15 96 90x and then d is equal to 90x minus 90 okay guys so now if we equate equate d and d is equal to d then 45x is equal to i am writing here 45x is equal to 90x minus 90 now 90 is equal to 90 minus 45x that is equal to 45x okay now x becomes 2 guys because 45 two times now x value becomes 2 okay now x value becomes 2 guys if if the x value is 2 now calculate the d value so d is 45x so 45x is equal to 45 into 2 that is 90 km so the distance is 90 km in option b guys option b understood or not option b understood or not now move to next question now move to next question guys so this is your next question two trains start from same point if train 1 covers the destination in 7 hours with 25 km per hour then train 2 covers the same distance in 5 hours now both the trains 
both the trains 1 and 2 increases the speed by 10 km per hour and 50 km per hour. Find out the difference in time by both the trains to reach the destination. To reach the destination. Now see guys, this type of questions we will see in even SBI prelims also. SBI PO prelims also. Okay. And in IBBS PO, in, in from, from IBBS pattern, this type of questions we will see very frequently guys in any of the ships. Okay. Now see, first of all we have to calculate the total distance here from starting point to destination d is equal to speed into time okay d is equal to speed into time girls time boys see speed d equal to speed into time now see guys train 1 covers the destination in 7 hours by traveling 25 kilometers per hour from this we can calculate the distance or not so d is equal to what's the speed 25 and what's the time taken by train 1? 7. 25 7 times is 175 or not? 175 kilometers. This is the distance guys. This is the distance from starting point to the destination. Okay. So let me raise these things. This is, this is very basic guys. No need to write on the paper. Okay. So now I directly write this here. The distance equal to. 175 kilometers okay now see i'm trying to cover the same distance in five hours same distance in five hours but we don't know the speed of train two and we know the distance here from the if we have the distance and the time then we can calculate easily the speed okay speed is equal to distance upon time okay we know this formula so from this speed is equal to distance is 175 kilometers and the time taken by train to is 5 hours so that is 35 times s yes, 5 3 times 15 2 carries 5 is 25 s yes, 35 kmph guys okay 35 so train to speed is equal to 35 now from here the question begins now both the trains 1 and 2 increases the speed by 10 kilometers and 15 kilometers guys okay so initially train 1 speed train 1 speed initially what they have 25 from 25 to it increases 10 kilometers now it becomes 35 okay plus 10 and this 35 becomes by increasing 15 okay increases 15 kilometers now what it becomes 50 so now get the difference in time to reach the both times the destination guys now see guys 175 is the distance if if 175 kilometers traveled by train 1 with this increased speed that is 35 how many times guys just now we calculated 35 5 times is 175 so here we get 5 hours okay that is in train 1 case and in case of train 2 this is 175 and divided by 50 because the increase speed of train 2 is 50 guys so this is 25 2 times 25 7 times and this is 3.5 times okay 3.5 times now see in case of train 1, the train is taking 5 hours even if it is increased by increase its speed by 10 kilometers per hour. In case of train 2, it takes 3.5 hours only by increasing its speed by 15 kilometers per hour guys. Okay, now the question they are asking is find out the difference in times from the both the trains to reach the destination. So 5 minus 3.5 that gives you 1.5 hours guys. 1.5 hours so where it is in option b in option b we have 1.5 hours guys 1.5 hours understood or not whether you are getting or not guys whether getting or not now see let's move to the next question if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment box guys or you can watch the video okay once again then you will get the clarity on this so there are three pipes this is pipes and system 
which is a similar concept that works in time and work also. Okay. So three pipes A, B and C can fill that tank. Pipe A fills in 36 minutes and pipe B fills in 40 minutes and pipe C can empty the tank in 20 minutes. So remember this pipe C is an emptying pipe. Okay. This is very very important in case of pipes and systems. Okay. So this empty represents a negative efficiency of this, that pipe. Okay. So now find out at what time the tank gets filled if all the three pipes are open. Okay guys. So we can do it by many methods by taking LCM of 36, 40 and 20 or by minute based method that is one day work concept. So see pipe A if pipe A fills the tank alone it takes 36 minutes and pipe B alone fills the tank in 40 minutes. And pipe C alone can empty the tank in 20 minutes guys. And if I take a one day work of pipe A, it becomes 1 by 36. So to, com to completely fill the tank, it takes 36 minutes. So one day work is 1 by 36 minutes plus. For B, it takes 40 minutes to completely fill the tank. And one day work is 1 by 40. So 1 by 40. Now minus here. Why minus? Because a and B, these two are filling pipes. So that's why positive. And for C, it is minus. Why? Because it is an emptying pipe. A negative efficiency. So that's why minus. So C can empty the tank in 20 minutes completely by uh, working alone. Okay. So for one day, it is 1 by 20. That is total equal to 1. Okay. So total work is 100%. That is equal to 1. Okay, guys. So... This is 1, 1 by 20. Now take the LCM guys. Now take the LCM. So see, this 20 is already in the 40. Now 36 and 40. What's the LCM guys? What's the LCM? That is 360 I think. Let me do once again. 40 and 36. This is 4, 10 times. 4, 9 times. 90, 9, 4, 30. Yes, 360. 360. The LCM is 360 guys. So 36, 10 times is 360, 10 plus, this is plus, 49 times, okay, that is 360 minus 20 how many times guys, 18 times minus 18, that is equal to 1. Now see guys, 10 plus 9, 19, 19 minus 1. 19 minus 18 that is 1 so 1 by 360 guys 1 by 360 that is equal to 1 okay so if you take and go this 360 like the to this side it becomes 360 divided by 1 so we can write it down inside 360 so what you get here minutes okay because everything is in minutes guys so in the final answer you final also you get in minutes in the final case also you get in minutes guys understood or not so this is very easy method to calculate this type but you check the options once whether they are given in the minutes guys no they have given in hours so now convert this 360 minutes into hours guys so 360 divided by 60 so this is 0 0 cancel 6 6 times 6 hours that is option B Understood or not guys? So the answer is option B that is 6 hours guys. So let me explain you once again. So there are three pipes A, B and C. A and B are filling pipes and C is an emptying pipe guys which has negative efficiency and A and B has positive efficiency. So if pipe A works alone it takes 36 minutes to completely fill the tank. In the same way pipe B fills the tank alone in 40 minutes. Okay. Coming to pipe C, it can empty alone in 20 minutes the completely filled tank. Okay, now what I am telling is that you just take one day concept. That is, if to fill a complete tank, it takes 36 minutes by A. For one minute, it takes, so sorry, for one day, it takes 1 by 36 minutes. One minute concept, we can say it as one minute concept or one day concept. Both are same guys. Okay. We will write like this mat, this pattern only. Okay. So just this pattern. 
okay so 1 by 36 plus 1 by 40 minus 1 by 20 that is equal to 1 why because total work is 100 percent that is equal to 100 percent equal to 1 okay now take the lcm of 36 40 and 20 it becomes 360 so 36 10 times is 360 plus 49 times is 360 minus 20 18 times so 18 10 plus 9 19 19 minus 18 that is 1 1 by 360 so either you take and go like this to the right side or you can directly reverse it okay that is 360 by 1 directly you can write it so 360 here you get answer in minutes guys okay here you get the answer in minutes so but in options we have everything in hours so convert these minutes into hours guys so 360 divided by 60 gives you 6 hours okay that is option b guys so now move to next question here is your next question guys here is your next question this is very very interesting question mr x bought certain amount from mr y okay he pays eight percent for four years and nine percent for six years and twelve percent for remaining period so see he pays eight percent for four years nine percent for six years <coughs> i'm sorry guys and twelve percent for remaining period and we don't know what's the remaining period is we have to read the question completely to know that if the total interest obtained by mr y from x is 8,799 8,799 is the total interest obtained by Mr. Y from X. At the total amount taken by him from Mr. Y if the business runs for 11 years. See, 11 years. The business runs for 11 years. Now we can get the remaining period easily because the entire business runs for 11 years and first 4 years is completed. Next 6 years is also completed. Now the remaining is 6 plus 4, 10 and 1 period is remaining. 1 year is remaining. So this 12%, 1 year guys. So this is just a cakewalk question. Without picking pen and paper, we can calculate this. Now see guys, 8% for 4 years. Simply just, how can we do So for 1 year, we are getting 8%. For 4 years, 32. 8 for 32. So 32%. Plus, so 9% per annum for 6 years. So for 1%, sorry, for 1 year it is 9. For 6 years, 9, 6, 54. So 54 percent plus, so 12% for 1 year. So as usual, 12. Okay, so this is the interest that Y gets from X, guys. So add this 3. So 30 plus. 50, 80, 90, okay, 90 plus 422, that is 98%, 98% guys, so 98% is the interest received by Mr. Y from Mr. X, so this 98% value is given in the question directly, that is 8,799, okay, so see, 98% is 8,799 guys 8,799 so now we have to calculate 100% because the principal the total amount is 100% guys okay the total amount is 100% now we have to calculate 100% so this is 98 how many times guys this is 98 8,799 8,799 means how many times we will get this so if we calculate this 8, 8, 98 6, 9, 6, 54, no, 7, 63 again 9 so we will get this 9, 9 times Okay guys, we are get we will get this approximately eighty 
that is uh, eight times eight, eight times and nine times point seven. So approximately we get eight thousand nine nine point seven guys. Okay, approximately we will get eighty nine point seven. Okay, eighty nine point seven. So if we get hundred, if we are hundred percent, we get eight thousand nine hundred and seventy. Eight thousand nine hundred and seventy. Whether we have that eight thousand nine hundred and seventy, we have eight thousand nine hundred. Okay. So here the answer is none of this. The answer will be in the decimal form, guys. The answer will be in the decimal form. Okay, because it will not cancel directly here. Okay. it will not get cancelled directly here you get 89.7 approximately okay that you get again some extra number also here after 7 so let me tell you once again this so there are two persons x and y okay there are two persons x and y okay guys now he he pays 8 percent for 4 years and 6 percent 9 percent for 6 years And twelve percent for the remaining period, guys. If the total interest obtained by Mr. Y from Mr. X is eight thousand seven hundred ninety-nine, so they are talking about the interest received by Mr. Y from X. So this is eight four times thirty-two, nine six times fifty-four, twelve how many times that the business runs for eleven years? Six plus four ten and one remain. This is one period. So twelve one time twelve. So if you calculate this percentage, you get ninety-eight, guys. Okay. You get ninety-eight percent. So ninety-eight percent is eight thousand seven hundred and ninety-nine, which cancel approximately eighty-nine point seven four like that. Okay. So if you multiply with hundred, because the total amount will be hundred percent, you get eight nine seven four approximately. Okay. So we don't have here any option with that. So here is option answer is option E, guys. Option E. Now see, go to the next question. Here is your next question, guys. Here is your next question. A shopkeeper sells the dress material for seven percent profit. If he sells it to her for extra one eighty rupees more, he will profit of he will get the profit of twenty five percent. Okay. Find the cost to price of dress material. So how many of you understand this question, guys? How many of you people understand this question? because it's a very very interesting question and these questions are very frequently asked in rrbs especially guys these questions are very very frequently asked in rrbs guys okay so that's why i'm asking you frequently so see guys so we don't know the actual cp you just assume the cp of dress is 100 rupees the cp of dress is 100 rupees at first he sells for certain certain amount he gets 7% profit He gets seven percent profit, and he thinks that this seven percent profit is not enough for me, and I have to make, and I have to sell some extra amount. So that extra amount is one eighty rupees. Okay, so he sells for extra one eighty rupees. Now he gets twenty five percent profit. Twenty five percent profit. Okay, now they are asking us to calculate the original CP of the dress. Hope though, hope so that you understand this question. See guys. Initially, you get seven percent profit. After taking extra one eighty rupees, okay. After taking extra one eighty rupees, then you are getting twenty five percent profit, okay. So this extra one eighty rupees, this extra one eighty rupees is making to get twenty five percent profit, okay. Yes or no? But initially, you get seven percent profit. Twenty five minus seven percent. How much you get? Eighteen percent. This eighteen percent profit is due to extra amount for one eighty rupees. Extra amount of one eighty rupees. Understood or not? So see guys, initially the cost price of dress material is X rupees. Now he sells it for some Y rupees, guys. So this for this Y rupees he gets seven percent profit. Now again he adds extra one eighty rupees for this, not for this. Okay. So now again he add extra y plus 180. Now he is getting 25% profit, guys. 
25 percent profit so already if he sells for x rupees he gets 7 percent profit and now for y plus 20 180 rupees he is getting 25 percent profit and this ink the difference of this profit is due to extra amount of 180 rupees so the difference is due to this 180 rupees or not guys so the difference is 25 minus 7 that is 18 percentage this 18 percentage is due to this 180 rupees understood or not very very important concept okay so 18 percentage is 18 percentage is 180 now we have to calculate 100 percent because the rest metal cp cp is 100 percent so 18 10 times 18 10 times so 100 into 10 that is 1000 rupees very easy question 1000 rupees in option d option d 1000 rupees so for this question we no need to pick any pen and paper guys for this question we no need to pick any pen and paper such an easy question guys okay now move to the next question here is your next question guys here is your next question arjun bima and chinni entered into a partnership this question is based on partnership guys very important question so arjun bima and chinna chinni entered into a partnership if arjun got once one by sixth of the total profit so we don't know the total profit but arjun got one sixth part of the total profit okay and bima and chinni shared the remaining profit in the ratio of two is to three find the total profit if the difference between the profit get by arjun and chinni is 650 rupees so these questions are coming nowadays guys in as so this type of question we have seen in sbi clerk okay this year and in the last year also so now see guys here i know i don't need to assume the total profit okay i just take the total profit as six parts because from these six parts one from these six part one part is taken by arjun okay so total profit that is six parts okay arjun takes one part remaining is remaining five parts okay remaining is five parts and these five parts is shared by bima and chinni in the ratio of two is to three okay now see this is shared by two parts and this is shared by three parts so this five parts shared into two parts and three parts these two parts is for bima and these three parts is for chinni okay these three parts is for chinni guys now find the total profit if the difference between profit get by arjun and chinni is 650 rupees now what is the arjun share of profit guys one part and chinni share of profit is three parts and the difference in this arjun and chinni is two parts that is three minus one two parts is 650 guys two parts is 650 now they are asking us to calculate total profit what is the total profit guys six parts six so this is three times so three times of 650 so 0 3 5 15 6 3 18, 19 1950 guys 1950 where is it in option c 1950 option c guys understood or not see how easy it is see how easy it is if he assumes uh, the total profit is 600 or certain certain part which is divisible by 6 it takes some more extra time to calculate but see with the given values and with the given ratios only i have solved this question okay with the given values and with the given ratios only i have solved this question guys so see how easy it becomes for us so let me explain you once again so there are three persons arjun bhima and chini entered into a partnership if Arjun got 1 by 6 of the total profit, okay, so here we don't know the total profit. So from that total profit, we get 1 by 6 part. Right now what I am telling is, if you think that the total profit is 6 parts, one part is taken by Arjun and the remaining part is 5 by 6 part. Okay, so 5 parts is remaining. And this 5 parts is shared by Bhima and Chini. Okay, guys, this 5 parts is shared by Bhima and Chini. So now, this bima gets two parts and this chini gets three parts guys and in the final question they are asking us to calculate the total profit if the difference between profit get by arjun and chini is 650 rupees 
Arjun get one parts, Chinni get three parts. Difference between Arjun and Chinni is two parts. Two parts is two fifty. That is that we have to calculate total profit. Total profit. Total profit is six parts. So two three times is six, and six fifty three times is nineteen fifty. That is option C, guys. Understood or not? Understood or not? Now go to the next question. Here is your next question, guys. Average age of a family with four members in is 28 years before five years. One new child was born. Now the family the family average becomes 30 at present. Find the age of child after four years. So this is a somewhat tricky question from age ages, guys. Okay. So whenever the child born, that many of the aspirants gets doubt. What we have to consider the age of child. So when Whenever the child is added, initially we have to consider his age is zero, guys. We no need to consider the age of child. Okay. At first the average remains constant. Okay. Initially, but now see, average age of a family with four members is 28, guys. Average age of a family with four members. In a family we have four members, and their average age is 28 years, guys. When it is before five years. Before five years. Now see, if you multiply four into twenty-eight and four five twenty, if you add, then you get the same value. Okay, because see, twenty-eight into four, eight four is thirty-two. Three carries. Four is twelve. Twelve plus sorry, four two is eight. Eight plus three that is eleven. One twelve and Before five years means for how many members? Four years, four members. Five years before four members. For the present year, for each member we have to add four five five years. So four five is twenty. So add twenty here. That is one thirty two. So in order to it takes much time to because we have to do twice. Now what I'm telling is now you just add twenty eight and five. Twenty eight and five. And multiply with four, then you get the same one thirty two as their total ages of the family. So twenty eight plus five that is thirty three. Thirty three into four, three four is twelve. Carry one, three four is twelve plus one thirty two. So see, you get same values here. Okay, but doing like this is quite interesting and. Time saving us, but doing like this is we have to calculate twice. Okay, so this is time taking. So avoid this method and follow this one, guys. So just add before five years to twenty eight to the average value. So not only five. Whenever the, there is an uh, whenever there is there is they given the before ages. Just add this before age to the average value and multiply with the number of person. Then you will get the total. Age of the family. Okay, that is one thirty two right now. We get here, and now one new child was born. Now the family average becomes thirty at present. So now the family's present age is thirty. Now how many members are in the family? Five members, not four, because one new child is also added. Okay, so now thirty into five, because we have to calculate the age of child also. At first, his age is zero. Okay, at first his age is zero, guys. Okay, so now new child was born, and now the family age has become thirty years, guys. So thirty into five that is one fifty. Thirty into five that is one fifty. Okay, if we get the difference of these two, that gives you the that gives you the ages of age of this newborn child, guys. Why? Because here you have only four members. Of the family's age total, and here you have four members plus the newborn child. Okay, if you take the difference of these two, then you will get the newborn child ages. That is 150 minus 132. That is 18. But what the question asking? Find the age of child after four years. So at present his age is 18. 18 plus 4. That is 22 years. 20. Two years. That is option C, guys. Option C. Understood or not? This type of question is very frequently asked and very quite interesting questions, guys. These are okay. 
so with this we have completed this 10 questions in part one of quantitative aptitude in english guys okay so hoping so that you like this session if you like this please hit the like button and the share the video with your friends and please give your valuable comments on this video guys and if you are new to my channel please subscribe and click on the bell icon to never ever miss any notification from my side guys so thanks